Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Gamer Nerd the Shore. I talk about or play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario 64. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and f completed the first two worlds except for the 100 coin stars, but I won't be collecting those just because they're not that fun to collect. Uh, anyways, in this episode, we're going to start off with my, with showing Mario's sleeping animation, which is very popular. Uh, in the game. Basically, if you just stand still, Mario gets bored and just falls asleep. He falls asleep sitting up, but eventually if you wait long enough, he lays down and starts saying stuff in his sleep, so I'll go ahead and show that off here. Finally, he said, I've been waiting here for three minutes. Uh, but yeah, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and go to the third world, which actually has some pretty interesting history behind it. Not too interesting, but just something strange enough to note, but not strange enough to be to like sit lying awake. Like, why did this happen? So this painting here, in the original Japanese version, it was a painting of some bubbles with a blue outline, and then in the American version, they changed it to orange outline with, uh, or orange frame, sorry, with a ship sunken at the bottom of the sea. And for some reason, in the Super Mario 64 DS version, I should have just said the DS version or in Super Mario 64 DS, whatever, uh, they changed it back to the bubble version. Why? <laughs> what purpose does that serve? The names of the stars are also hints for finding them. They are displayed at the beginning of each course. You can collect the stars in any order. You won't find some stars, enemies, or items unless you sp select a specific star. You, After you collect some stars, you can try another course. We're all waiting for your help. So yeah, episode 5 and we're already in world 3. Plunder in the sunken ship in Jolly Roger Bay. This place has some really good music, so I'll just let you guys listen. One of my favorite songs in the game. Uh, anyways, basically what we did there is there was an eel inhabiting a sunken ship, and we just had to like be like, hey, get out of there, and he was like, no, and we were like, okay, and we left. Then we came back and he was gone. I don't know why, but that's just how it happens. After you unlock these chests in a certain order, the water begins to drain. For what reason? I don't know. Now that I'm looking at this, Jolly Roger Bay is a very weird level. Anyways, we got the star. Here we go! go. Can Eel Come Out to Play is our second mission. And the eel is probably the third scariest thing in this game, and so in Mario Odyssey, we were like, huh, you know, kids were terrified of this thing. You know what, let's make it scarier, and just made it scarier. <laughs> Anyways, what you want to do is you just want to come up to the eel, he'll get angry, and then he'll leave. You can put this, your camera, in the wall, though. Because the tail is, or his tail has the star on it. You have to touch the star to actually get it. So you can basically time when the star is going to pop out. And then you can just grab it. Treasure of the Ocean Cave. So this one is the first one that doesn't have anything to do with an eel. Also, something interesting with the swimming is you can repeatedly press A to make Mario swim, or you can hold down B, or no, you can hold down A, sorry, and he'll just do this kicking thing. Uh, if you get good at the timing with just like the rapidly pressing A, if you get a good timing with it, 
then there's no reason to hold down A at all. What's the sign say? I've never read it before. Keep out. That means you. Arrgh. Anyone entering this cave without permission will meet certain disaster. Having some pirate-related things lately makes me want to play Mario Party 2 on the channel soon. Arg, Ahoy, matey. I have a sunken treasure here, I do. But to pluck the plunder, you must open the treasure chest in the right order. What order is that, you say? I'll never tell. The cap'n. So yeah, here's another one where you have to uh, open the chest in the right order, and then they give you the star. And hey, I predicted where it was gonna be. Here we go. We're almost done with this. We're halfway done, so it's possible we could complete this this entire world in this episode, minus the hundred coin star, of course. From now on, whenever I say like the entire world or like completed the entire world, just know I mean all of the stars except for the hundred coin star. You know what? Now I'm determined to beat this whole world within this episode, so this might be an extra long one, but I want to beat this world in this episode today. Eventually I'll get better at speaking English. It's my first language, but I'm awful at speaking it or making any coherent sense out of my words. I like- I kinda like that, how the star is like, weird because it's on the rocking ship. Anyways, my next let's play, I'll kinda give you guys a hit, hint. The game's 20 year anniversary is coming up, uh, pretty soon. Anyways, blast to the stone pillar. I'll prepare the cannon for you. I don't think I read the Red Bombs dialogue in the previous episode, or previous world, sorry. So, this one, the way that I kind of determine where to shoot is this sort of, like, cloud right here. Um, I put the top of my bottom crosshair, or top of my bottom arrow, uh, to the top of the cloud, and then I shoot, and it's good. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this next star I need to get something special for. Yeah, so we have one last, last star left that we have to get. And the way we have to get it is first we have to get the metal cap. Anyways, the way that we get Metal Mario is that we want to go into the basement. I haven't shown this place off yet. Uh, here's the basement, by the way. It's pretty creepy. Uh... Anyways, we want to go into here. This is World 6, by the way. We want to go all the way to World 6. And... I guess spoilers for what we're going to see later. But I'm not going to show off too much. I forget how to get to this the legitimate way. So I'll do it the speed runway. Do it correctly. That was almost cool. Oh wait, no, I have to do a different thing for this. So this is Dory. Uh, we'll get to him later. But you just want to ground pound on his back and then hop up onto his head. And he brings you to your destination. I don't think you need to ground pound uh, Dory to uh, lead him around. But you do need him to... You, need, you do need to ground pound him to uh, get up to where you want to go. Anyways, here's the metal cap stage. I know I'm kind of bouncing around different topics and such. But it's a red coin level, and so we're going to go ahead and get all those. So yeah, we get the switch. You've just stepped on the metal cap switch. The metal cap makes Mario invincible. Now metal caps will pop out of out of all the green blocks you find. We get the star, and it looks like we'll end off both by 
getting by completing Jolly Roger Bay, but also by getting our 20th star, which is a nice round number. Through the jet stream, I'm pretty sure there are two stars named this. Like, there's one in this level, and then there's one in Dire Dire Docks, which is also a water level. So why do they have two water level stars, both named the same thing, which both entail the same thing? It was not a good day for Nintendo when they were naming these two stars. Anyways, with 20 stars and 3 completed worlds under our belt, they're called courses, but I keep calling them worlds. I'll try to call them courses from now on. Uh, let's go ahead and end off the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and just head to world four. Course, dang it, course four. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye